Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Marty's Toy Box. So last night during Money in the Bank, John Cena announced that 2025 will be his last year wrestling. And at first he just said Mania will be his last Mania and stuff like that. But after the presser, when he was uh, speaking, he said that his run, uh, as of right now, is scheduled to go all through 2025. So we have one final year of John Cena and there's about 50 dates. So I thought it would be fun. Let's fantasy book John Cena's last run in the WWE. So it all kicks off at the Royal Rumble. This is where Cena's first appearance will be. Put John Cena in the Royal Rumble. Bring him down to the final two between John Cena and Ilya Dragunov, right? Have these two be the final men, but Ilya upsets John Cena, wins the Royal Rumble, and goes on to WrestleMania. I really think that next year will really be the breakout year for all of these young guys that are coming up. Gunther... Uh, Braun Breaker, Ilya Dragunov, Carmelo Hayes, all of those guys. So Ilya goes on to WrestleMania. So Cena loses. And then we go to Elimination Chamber. John Cena's last chance to win the 17th world title and break the record. Now I don't know who else will be in this match, but let John Cena win the Elimination Chamber. His last chance, his last ditch effort, and then he goes on to WrestleMania. Now, I want to say there's a lot of ways you can go about this, right? You're not going to have John Cena lose the entire year. You have a perfect opportunity to let John Cena break the world title record because you know it's going to be his last year. After that year's over, it's over and done with, right? So at the first half of the year, let it be John Cena chasing after the title, right? And he will win matches, and he's not going to put people over, but it gets him the 17th world title. So leaning in to WrestleMania 41, we have John Cena versus the current champion at the time, Randy Orton. You know, legend match, it's really a draw for WrestleMania as well. You know, this legend, legend versus legend. The people who used to watch wrestling, who have not watched it, will tune in for this match. And after they watch the other matches, they could be rehooked on the product. And I think really that's what WWE should focus on the first half of the year, is giving us matches that the old wrestling fans will tune in to watch. And they can get a breath of fresh air with the new matches as well from all the newer people and the new style. And maybe, just maybe, you get a few thousand, maybe even a hundred thousand new viewers for the product that used to watch it but don't watch it anymore. And that's the way they really should go for the first half of the year. So John Cena, Randy Orton, WrestleMania with John Cena making history and breaking the 16 uh, championship record held by him and Ric Flair currently. They are tied John Cena comes out and he breaks the record, submitting his legacy as 17 time world champion. So I can't go after the World Heavyweight Championship because he's a 17 time uh, WWE champion, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so I just got to go after the undisputed title. And I think around that time, you know, I don't know who the champion would be, but whoever it is, John Cena wins at WrestleMania. Maybe night one main event, maybe night two, depending on the World Heavyweight Championship picture. But I think it could be the perfect ending to night two of WrestleMania. So. That leads us in to Backlash. So at Backlash, we just get the rematch. We get the rematch between John Cena and Randy Orton. You know, once again, people may tune in. You know, old wrestling fans may tune in. And after, So WrestleMania, they do it face versus face, just like two guys, you know, two friends wrestling each other. But after that, Randy Orton turns heel. So this, we have a heel version, the legend killer, to be exact, Randy Orton versus John Cena. With, of course, John Cena coming out on top. So, there is a Clash of the Castle that will be that year, so I don't really know what to do for that one. So I left that out. I'll leave that up to you guys. But, money in the bank. They do it 2011 style all over again, and we run back CM Punk and John Cena for the Undisputed title. Perfect match. Once again, uh, it's really going through the years of John Cena's career, and one of the biggest moments of Punk's career and a huge moment in just John Cena's career and WWE in general was CM Punk beating John Cena at the 2011, I forget if it was 2011 or 2012, forgive me, uh, but beating him for the title and leaving Money in the Bank with the spinner. So they sort of throw it back to that classic and once again, Money in the Bank, this would be a draw for wrestling fans who don't watch the product anymore. CM Punk, John Cena, Money Maker match, they have to run it back at least one more time. John Cena beats Punk and continues on his reign. And that leads us in to SummerSlam. The biggest SummerSlam match ever. John Cena and The Rock. 
everyone's talking about, you know, doing Rock and Roman at SummerSlam, but it's just not going to happen, you know. Rock is currently injured filming a movie, but save it, you know, put the Bloodline story on hold because this is a lot more important. John Cena and The Rock putting on a classic 2025 SummerSlam. Once again, you get all of the legends, you know, the le the legendary run of John Cena, you know, him with the title with the 17th reign, and you get all of the classic wrestling fans who watched this match live at WrestleMania and through all the matches they've had, coming back to the product to see this. Two big Hollywood guys as well. Their fans from their acting roles would tune in, and the audience for WWE could grow tremendously just in this John Cena run. Because they'll tune in for John Cena, and John Cena versus The Rock, John Cena versus Punk, John Cena versus Orton, but also, while waiting for that match, they will get to see the new product that is being put on, and maybe they become a fan again. So, after that, leading into, hopefully they do it again, Bad Blood. Now, this is when we sort of do the pivot. So, John Cena having a big run with a title and stuff like that. At Bad Blood, give him a younger guy. Give him Braun Breaker. Bad Blood, right? So, I think the first half of the year is going to go Cena chasing after the title, Cena breaking the title record and, you know, winning and just having a run with it. So that gets all the classics in. But once we get towards the second half of the year, closer and closer to the end of John Cena wrestling, we give him the younger guys. And this is when John Cena does what he really enjoys doing, and that's putting the younger generation over. So I think at this time, you have Braun Breaker beat John Cena for the undisputed title. Braun Breaker becomes the new champ, really elevates him to that next level. If he was, if he's not there already, it really elevates him to the next level. And then after that, right, then John Cena is just like, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? He starts a program with Carmelo Hayes, leading into Crown Jewel. Another young guy that can get that rub from beating John Cena and stuff like that. So it's Carmelo Hayes, John Cena, maybe have Cena come out on top, but if you want to put Carmelo Hayes over, if he's at that point where you think that he's a main event player, put him over. Let him beat John Cena at Crown Jewel, right? And that elevates Carmelo Hayes again, you know? And you see the trend. We're, we're elevating younger guys now, putting the next generation over and really just passing the torch to them. So after Crown Jewel, we go to Survivor Series, where once again, a guy, well, LA Knight's not younger, but putting another guy over that could use it to really elevate them to the next level in the WWE, LA Knight. Right? LA Knight, John Cena, Survivor Series would be a great match. It would be a great draw of a match with LA Knight going over. So yes, this is a bunch of losses from Cena, but that's how Cena wants to go out. John Cena wants to go out putting the younger generation over, giving them that next level because he's on his way out. He's not going to be wrestling anymore, so there's no point for him to go over. And this is the moment where we transfer and to really letting the younger generation rise and thrive in the product. And it elevates all of them to the next level. So, after that, we get the John Cena's last match, right? At this point in time, John Cena's like, you know, ever since I lost the undisputed title, like, I can't get it back. Braun Breaker took everything from me, you know, like this younger generation. So, he has one final test. And that test is the Ring General Gunther. They do a whole pay-per-view. You know how they do the Shields last match? It wasn't a pay-per-view, but it was a special show, and it aired on network. Do that again, and you can have this big draw of fans. You know, you do the whole match card, but in the main event, you have John Cena versus Gunther. John Cena, his final match ever, will do what John Cena wants to do, and I believe that will be put over Gunther. Gunther wins. Gunther retires John Cena. It gives Gunther that, you know, a, that notch on his belt. You know, when Baron Corbin retired Kurt Angle, you know, it was supposed to elevate Baron Corbin to another level, but they fumbled the bag. But if you give it to someone like Gunther, Gunther retired John Cena, dude, legendary status right there. And then, you know, maybe that can lead into him main eventing WrestleMania and stuff like that. Gunther's already on a terror reign. He's going to win the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. I'm calling it now. But John Cena's last match, he puts over the young guys. I think that's how they're going to do it. The first half of the year, you know, Cena has a chance with the Rumble, and he comes up just short. He has a chance, and he comes up just short with the Elimination Chamber. He finally punches his ticket, and then he breaks the record at WrestleMania. And so with the first half of the year, you have John Cena on a run with all of these legendary wrestlers. Yes, it takes away from the younger guys for a little bit, but A, John Cena uh, deserves it. He deserves to break the record. 
but also it's the perfect opportunity to try to revitalize wrestling in a lot of people's lives. People will tune in for these legendary matches, for these matches with John Cena and Randy Orton, John Cena and CM Punk, John Cena and The Rock, and everything like that. They will tune in, and you can get a lot of new fans because they will see the whole product. And then towards the end of the year, John Cena does what he probably really wants to do, and that puts over the younger generation. Let me know how would you guys book John Cena's return to the ring throughout his whole 2025 run, and would you have him lose in his retirement match? Or how would you even do it? Would you have him break the world record uh, for a championship title reigns? Let me know. And I thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.